session we would be understanding what are jet streams now uh, to understand jet streams we will have to have a fundamental idea about the concept of circulation that we have talked about and the wind patterns now if we move back to the previous lesson we would say uh, see that we had talked about three cells that are formed the headless cell formation the feral cell formation and finally the polar cell formation so you have the headless feral and polar cell and what is interesting to note here is jet streams are formed at the boundaries of the three cell model we call this model as a three cell model so you have headless cell feral cell and polar cell and jet streams are formed at the boundaries of the uh, the uh, the three cell model so you would have one jet stream which is running on this region and another jet stream that's running on this region and similarly it would happen in the south the uh, the jet streams which are running towards extreme north are known as polar jet streams and then you have the subtropical jet streams and in some cases you have the subtropical jet streams that are replaced by the tropical easterly jet streams that we'll see how now starting with jet streams what are jet streams i can say they are high speed winds that blow in the upper troposphere so you have high speed winds these blow uh, not in a regular fashion so they can i can say they blow in a meandering fashion so they have meandering bands that are formed they are irregular in nature okay again i can say they are concentrated to specific areas they are found at about 7000 to 15000 meters above the earth surface and the speed is around 250 to 550 kilometers per hour so these are some of the common characteristics or i could say major characteristics of jet streams now because of jet streams there is a strong turbulence or because of the wind shear and the aircrafts that are moving into the upper troposphere need to take care of the passengers and because of the safety issues they uh, need to know the regions of jet streams so they avoid the areas of jet streams again once you know the pattern of jet streams you can plan out the route information based on uh, that now to understand the jet streams and the uh, the intensity of jet streams i could say we need to be very clear about what is angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum so you have the two images here and what we are trying to explain is the conservation of angular momentum so when i say angular momentum is a um, product of mass velocity and radius if i want to conserve the angular momentum since the mass of both the girls here are same in this case when they are spinning around in this case the radius is more and in this case since the hands are close the radius is less so since i want to conserve this quantity what would happen if r is more velocity would be less or the speed of the girl would be less but however in the second case when the radius decreases when the hands are shrink closer the radius decreases as a result the velocity increases and similarly happens with the jet stream so when we understand the formation of jet streams we will see how the radius of the jet stream decreases and once the radius decreases the velocity of the jet stream jet stream increases so therefore understanding conservation of angular momentum is very important to understand the jet streams now jet streams formation when we talk about i can say we'll understand the formation in two basic criteria first is the polar and the subtropical jet stream and the second is the tropical jet streams now the formation of the polar and the subtropical jet streams would be more or less the similar so i can say polar subtropical and mid latitude jet streams would have similar kind of formation technique and you would have a separate formation mechanism for tropical easterly jet streams so we'll understand both of these right now now the polar or the subtropical jet streams as i said in the north uh, the polar jet stream is around the regions of north america europe and 
northern parts of asia in the south they are around the regions of the polar jet stream is around the region of antarctica now these both the jet streams follow the three cell model so as i mentioned they are located on the boundaries of the three cell model so you would have one jet stream the subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream that would run respectively in these regions now what is happening as we have already talked about the concept of angular momentum here when the air is being heated the hot air moves up so hot air parcel is moving up and it diverges in the upper atmosphere as we have talked about in the circulation system or the wind circulation patterns now again what is important to know here is the impact of coriolis force so because of the coriolis force in the north it would move towards east so when it would move towards east what would happen is so as the air is moving northward you have the curvature of the earth that is here and since the air is moving northward what would happen the air would move close to the uh, rotational axis or the axis of rotation so you would have a northward movement with the uh, uh, the wind moving closer to the rotational axis and since it's moving closer to the rotational axis it would decrease the radius now once we have the radius that is decreased based on the conservation of angular momentum you would have the velocity of the wind would increase now these strong winds are blowing east but they are originating from the west or an observer to an observer it would look as a wind from the west so they are also known as west winds or westerlies but they are moving towards the eastern direction and so we can understand this is how the polar jet streams are formed now again i can say increase in the temperature difference would make the winds much more stronger so if i say you have uh, during the winters you would have much wider temperature difference between the summers and the winters or the extremes in the temperature would be much higher that means since the temperature gradient is much higher the polar uh, the polar westerlies that are created or the jet streams that are created in the winters would be much much stronger as compared to the summer season so that is one thing to note about the polar uh, the polar jet streams now again you have let's say this is the map of north america and you have south america here and you have the european region here now let's say if this is the actual actual polar jet stream that's running however because of the changes in the temperature gradient and pressure gradient this polar jet stream might change its path in certain seasons so this would be an alternate path for the polar jet stream so based on the temperature gradient and the pressure gradient you have the various path of the jet streams that could be seen in the atmosphere now formation of the tropical easterly jet stream now a typical case for formation of tropical jet stream is attributed to the tibetan plateau we have already talked about tibetan plateau in a separate class we'll again refer it here because this as we mentioned in the previous class is a huge landmass and that huge landmass at such a height affects the uh, the climate of the region now what happens is warming of the land takes place at the tibetan plateau and this warming that is taking place at the tibetan plateau is much more as compared to the uh, the ocean to the south of it as a result what would happen is there would be creation of a temperature gradient and this temperature gradient would be north south temperature gradient now this north south temperature gradient would again impact the winds that are originating so air will flow towards south uh, to the south from the tibetan plateau when it's flowing south it would deflect the air and that as it moves south what would happen is it is moving away from the axis of rotation so when it's moving down it's moving southward it's moving away from the axis of rotation and since it's moving away from the axis of rotation what would happen here is the radius would increase and since there would be increase in the radius again there would be decrease in the velocity and these are attributed to 
the formation of the tropical easterlies now tropical easterlies in certain cases can be much more strong however usually tropical easterlies are not that intense as the polar jet streams are now we have talked about the formation of the jet streams so here you have the three cell diagram and you can see the regions where you have the jet stream formation so you have the subtropical jet stream formation and the mid latitude or the polar jet stream formation and these occur in certain path and this path as we said is a meandering path now when we talk about the types of jet streams we would classify jet streams into three basic types since we have talked about the formation under three heads we would again talk about the uh, the jet streams under three heads so we'll uh, quickly go through the main points or the main highlights of each of the jet stream so let's first talk about the mid latitude jet stream or the polar jet stream so mid latitude jet stream is also known as the polar jet stream these are one of the most intense jet streams that occur on the earth usually found at a height of 10 km the velocity is much higher as compared to other jet streams the extremes can be ranging from 130 km per hour in winters to around 65 km per hour in summers that means the winters you have much more intense uh, jet streams as compared to summers again the reason remains the same you have higher temperature contrast during the winters and during the winters you have sudden cooling due to lack of the sun rays in the region as a result you have a sudden drop in the temperature and the differences in the temperature increase because of that as we said temperature and pressure gradient are the two major things that govern the intensity of the jet stream so you have higher temperature difference as a result the jet streams that would be formed in this region would be much more intense now these polar jet streams are also formed due to the polar fronts that occur in this region in the upper tropospheric level where you have the formation of polar fronts and you would have the areas of divergence and convergence now the areas of divergence would be bringing the air down the stream however you would have areas of convergence where you would have the uh, the cyclonic or the extra tropical cyclonic conditions that could be seen that we would refer under the head of cyclone in the later class so these are the specific characteristics of polar jet streams now the next is the subtropical jet stream subtropical jet streams occurs around 13 kilometers above the subtropical high pressure area usually in the uh, in the subtropical latitude they are found uh, these are less intense as compared to the polar jet streams you have less temperature gradient and less pressure gradient that can be seen in the subtropical jet streams uh, again they are intense only during the months of winters and early spring because during winters and early spring you would have higher contrast in temperature so as a result the jet streams would be much stronger or much intense during the winters and the early springs however in asia the tropical jet stream which is also known as the westerly jet stream is replaced by the tropical easterly jet stream so this subtropical westerly jet stream is replaced by the tropical easterly jet stream in the parts of asia and that is again attributed to the presence of tibetan plateau you would have uh, the tropical easterly which occurs at a at the level of tropopause around 15 degrees north latitude you would see the tropical easterly formation it intensifies as you move towards the uh, west of the south tip of India and because of the tropical easterly you would have monsoon conditions in India and parts of Africa so you would have tropical easterly which would attribute to the western African monsoon conditions uh, we have talked about the regimes of monsoon and there we have explained that the uh, the various regimes of monsoons under that you have the African monsoon which is divided into the West African and the Southern African so that would be responsible for the West African monsoon conditions and again it exists due to the warm air that is rising up and because of the heat that is produced from the land mass you would have a temperature gradient that would occur and that temperature gradient would lead to the formation of the tropical easterly jet streams in the regions of Asia and would impact the monsoonal climate of that region specifically. 
So with this we cover the jet streams. In the next two sessions we would be talking about uh, cyclones and anticyclones. Under cyclones we would be talking about the tropical and the temperate and then the differences between the cyclones and the anticyclones in the further classes. You can subscribe to our channel for any further updates. Have a good day ahead.